Yeah, good afternoon. I would like to welcome you to this input on Blue Community, an initiative for water as human right and public good. My name is Lisa Krebs and I'm working for the Reformed Churches Bern Jura Solaturn. This is a Protestant church in Switzerland and also a member of the Protestant Church in Switzerland. I'm here together with Karl Heuberger. Very good afternoon to all. My name is Karl. I'm working in HEX, the Swiss Agency for Development Work of the Swiss Protestant Church. My profession is I'm a farmer agriculture, but I worked during the last 30 years for HEX, program officer for, uh, for Latin America and Ethiopia, and now a member of the thematic advisory team for the right to water. We live in a water crisis. More than 2.2 billion people don't have access to safe drinking water, and more than 800 million people lack basic access to water climate change, water pollution, population growth and inadequate use of water are leading to an even more severe crisis. Scientists predict that by 2040 demand for clean water will exceed supply by 40 percent. The water is a global crisis and therefore we need besides local and regional also global efforts to improve the situation. Blue Community is such an instrument. It is a very simple instrument to contribute something, to stand up against this water crisis. It is very simple. It enables cities, church congregations, universities, NGOs, workers unions, and other civil-based organizations to advocate for the human right to water. Based on the case of the Swiss Blue Communities, we would like to show you how they support the initiative at the international level. We present examples and discuss also changes and limits, challenges and limits. First, we would like to start with a small introduction to the Blue Community Initiative and then Carl will present the basic principle four of a Blue Community using the example of a project of HEX in Brazil. After discussion about what has been said so far, we tell you more about concrete activities of a Blue Community, of a church congregation who is a Blue Community. But let us now start with the initiative. The story of Blue Community has its start in Canada, a country with great abundance of water similar to Switzerland. However, the former Prime Minister Harper had the brilliant idea to make profit out of this water wealth and he fostered water privatization. For example, with the granting of licenses for the use of drinking water for industrial purposes such as the bottled water industry. Due to the lack of public control of water as irreplaceable good and also due to environmental damages due to the enormous amount of water consumption, the Council of Canadians, Canada's largest social and environmental organization and allies launched the Blue Community Initiative. It was the idea to give local people an instrument to uh, protest against these water privatizations. Even though the project Blue Community was the idea of several persons and organizations, I have to mention now someone in particular, namely Maud Barlow. She's the famous head of the Blue Community Initiative. In 2008, um, Maud was um, advisor to the president of the UN General Assembly on water issues, but she was also the chair of the Council of, Organ um, of Canadians. During her work 
for the UN. She was also involved in the discussions for human right to water and sanitation. It was then later ratified in 2010, amongst others also with strong support from the WCC. So Maud Barlow was very strongly involved in this international discussion about the human right to water on the one hand, and on the other hand, she was very much aware of the situation at home with the water privatization. So it was the idea to Maud to give the local people something simple to fight against this water privatization, and it consists of three core principles. Core principle one of the Blue Community Initiative states that blue communities recognize that water is a human right. No one should be deprived of, the wa of water. It is essential for life. Everybody must have access to water. Second, Blue communities advocate that water services should remain in public hands. Water is irreplaceable, a irreplaceable good, a common. It is not a commodity like other goods, so everybody needs access and therefore it needs a collective ownership. And third, blue communities say no to the sale of bottled water where tap water is safe to drink. Bottled water is not a sustainable solution where there is no clean drinking water. Bottled water is costly, it has a negative impact on the environment. Instead of money to build markets of bottled water, money is needed to build a public water supply. These three basic principles are universal. Each blue community worldwide has to respect them. However, there is a possibility to, to add a principle. This was also the case in Switzerland. On the one hand, we have a lot of knowledge of the public water service. And on the other hand, we are rather active in the domain of development cooperation, especially in the water sector. Therefore, the basic principle four demands that Swiss Development Corporation incorporates the experience gained in supporting public water supply systems. Blue communities promote public-public partnership with international partners and advocate the right to water at the international level. This is the fourth principle, and I'm not going deeper into it because Carl will share more information later. But before, let me briefly explain how blue communities work and how they are organized. Each blue community, whether it is a church congregation or an NGO or a university, has to respect all of these basic principles by implementing concrete activities to this end. Of course, the character or form of the activities has a lot to do with the type of a blue community. For example, it is natural for a church congregation to offer an annual service on the topic of water or a professional input within the framework of north-south projects is one of the possibilities of a blue community. Maybe a city strives to ensure that only tap water is drunk in its own structures and force the consumption of tap water at events with appropriate infrastructure. So in short, each blue community respects the principles within the frame of its possibilities. There are no specifications for the number of these activities, but it is not possible to focus only on one of these principles. All four have to be respected. Apart from reflecting, respecting these principles, there are hardly any liabilities. Blue community is a self-declaration to the before-mentioned principles. It has no legal framework. It is not 
a label, there are no financial bindings. It is, an, it is really an initiative with a very low threshold to become part of it, with the corresponding advantages and disadvantages, of course. Now let me give a short overview of the blue communities. Yes, on the world map, uh, you can see that there are blue communities in North and South America, in Canada, the United States, Chile, Brazil, Colombia. Yes, that's it. And in Europe, France, Germany, Belgium, Spain, Greece and Switzerland, all these countries, they have blue communities. There are many, some very famous blue communities such as Paris or Berlin is a blue community, Barcelona, Montreal or Los Angeles. Most of these cities made a very negative experience with water privatization before they became a blue communities. In Switzerland we have almost 40 blue communities, too many for one slide. I put some of them to this slide, you can see the Protestant church in Switzerland below as one member, but uh, we have cities like Bern, St. Gallen, Neuchâtel, different universities, workers unions, and half of the almost 40 blue communities have a church character. In most cases, these are local church congregations. In contrast to the, situation, to the situation in other countries, we have many members with a church background, I think, because the coordination office is with the Reformed Church of Spain, Eurasolatun, in other countries there are no blue communities with a, a church uh, background, but uh, we are quite um, sure that we can change this after this <laughs> WCC assembly, so we had a lot of interested contacts. Now, it's time to look a little bit more to this core principle four, where we have this north-south element, um, where we try to foster also access to clean drinking water in the global south. Yes, th thanks a lot. Yes, I will try to um, explain a bit how we are promoting this principle of um, public-public partnership when it comes to uh, improving access to water. HEX is member of Blue Community since 2017 and being the um, cooperation arm of the Swiss churches our, our responsibility and our mission is exactly working with local actors in the south. HEX is working in more than 30 uh, countries in the southern part of the world, working with peasant organizations, women's organizations, NGOs, uh, social movements, um, but also with local municipalities. And we understand our contribution in the network of Blue Community Switzerland exactly to promote uh, these public-public partnerships between the partners here, between the blue communities here in Switzerland, and build bridges uh, between actors in the south, which are promoting also the right to water. Okay. Next. Our experience from our work with partners in the south is that yes it's a huge challenge access to water for so 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 many people's communities in so many regions access to drinking water but also access for food production uh, and it's it's uh, getting worse with the climate changes and so it's a huge challenge to have access to water and also the the adequate uh, treatment of the wastewater is a huge challenge which needs our attention. And yes, the people 
organized in communities and in grassroots organizations, they have a big and huge potential to do something, and they are doing something, and they need our support and our solidarity. And third, we in Switzerland, but also in Germany and other European countries, northern countries, yes, we have a huge knowledge concerning access to water, how to organize, how to, to, to organize the, the water supply, but also how to organize the wastewater treatment. And this knowledge uh, must come closer to the need in the global south. And we are convinced that exactly we need more bridges between this knowledge here in the north and the need and the active people, motivated people, organizations in the south. And so I want to, to explain a little bit and to show uh, a concrete example where we are working and what is the challenge and the, and the potential also for these kind of breaches between blue communities and actors in the south. We are looking to Brazil, to the re region of the two federal states, Minas Gerais and Bahia, and more exactly to the Rio Pardo, which has a length of more or less 600 kilometers going to the Atlantic, um, extension of uh, 37 municipalities and the, muni and the population of around 1 million. And we have in this region during the last, let's say, 15, 20 years, expanding activities of the mining industry, the agro-industry, and competing with the, with the sources, with, 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 the, with the water for the people. And so the communities are uh, every year have less water. They have a high potential of conflicts between these different actors uh, competing with the water. And we have very, very motivated municipalities, uh, um, uh, grassroots organizations, and uh, different kind of, of organizations working together to, to promote and def defend the, the right to access to water. In 2008, um, the, the partner organization of HEX came together with the conviction, yes, we want to do something. And they created together a so-called water observatory um, to promote the defense of the, of the water sources. And today, this water observatory has mo um, more or less 35 members. Uh, grassroots organizations, but also the official, municipal, official municipalities. And so this water observatory is um, a local initiative, a very wide, with a very, very participatory way. And we as HEX are, are supporting, are accompanying these processes also financially with the capacity building uh, activities. Um, and also and, and actors here in, Switz, in Switzerland, for example, the city of Bern, is giving also project support to these activities of the Water Observatory. And so we, in the last months, we produced a very short video of four minutes, and I invite you to, to have a look to the, the, this, this video, which explains a bit this concrete situation and what the people there, the organization, are doing to improve access to water. The sound is very slow, but it's, um, it's written in English, huh? what the people is um, explaining.
Yes, let us work together to keep alive the Rio Pardo. And here in Switzerland uh, and in, in Europe, we have so many blue communities and the big question, but what can we do concrete, in very concrete manner to really to support movements like that in Rio Pardo, but, but also movements in Honduras, in, uh, in Ethiopia, in so many other countries where the people is organized. And perhaps just, just three examples of what really can be contributed. One of these examples is the, um, the contribution, for example, for the, of the University of Zurich. They uh, created a, an app, a crowd water app. This is an instrument to observe the water. Uh, volunteers in all over the world, also in the, in the most um, uh, 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 sites, um, where far away can observe regularly and the only thing they need is a is a is a, a phone and to make photos and to contribute this observation in this app and so it's a, a participatory way to observe and the university of zurich is um, uh, analyzing this data and giving back to the to the people and so they have better data also for the negotiation with the authorities and so we are promoting this instrument. The University of Zurich is giving also a workshop um, online to the actors in the Rio Pardo region and all, also in other countries. Next. Another example is the so-called water flow diagram. This was a, a shared effort of the SDC, the Swiss Corporation, HEX, and the and the EAVAC, the Federal Institute for Aquatic Research, this allows cities uh, like Rio Pardo de Minas in this uh, uh, region of the Rio Pardo to have a clearer overview what really is the situation of the water in our urban area and in our city and to communicate also with the people, with the, the wide public, yes, these are the main challenges in our cities and so this brings together the people and is the basis for a shared agenda to improve the water, uh, the, the access to water. And so HEX is co contributing uh, to promote this um, working instrument. And so each member of Blue Community has their own knowledge, their own possibility and perhaps the, the third uh, chance is the city of Bern, they have a budget every year to contribute to concrete projects and the city of Bern, for example, is contributing every year 50,000 francs to exactly this kind of activities. And so this is the case also so for so many church communities to contribute, but also to participate very actively, for example, every year in the World Water Day to promote consciousness about the challenges when it comes to the problem of access to water. Thank you, Carl, for this insight in the international dimension of blue community. I think now we, you have the basic of blue community, of the blue community initiative. Maybe you also now have questions. Then, it's, then this is the time, yes? Thank you. Um, it's, it's very interesting since uh, we in the church uh, just now um, have this topic and discuss whether we want to join. And uh, if I understand you right, there are two, two fields where you're active. The one field is inside Switzerland, where, where the aim is to shape our mind for the water itself, to shape our mind how we see water and how we use it every day as a public good. And the second thing is to do advocacy work outside in, uh, in foreign countries. We saw it on the map, these two things. And now my question is, I think the, the, first, the first part is, is very important that um, in, uh, in the Western countries we shape our, our uh, daily use of the water. And um, there are cities joining this initiative. Now my question is, if a, if a city joined, 
Is it still for the city governmental structure, for the employees? Or is it also that the city itself, after that, spreads this message in their city for the, for the, um, um, for the people, for the society living in the city? Do you understand? Is the question clear enough? Excuse me. Yes, I, I think so. I think the two options exist. So, as I told you before, or at the beginning, it's not a very formal initiative. So we have really le uh, only a few regulations. So it's up to the blue community holder how he's implementing these uh, core principles. So sometimes it is the idea stuck a little bit into this um, city administration, but there are like Maybe it's also a little bit the case in Bern sometimes. But on the other hand, there are other examples. Berlin is a very good example. There, the idea of turning blue came from different uh, NGOs. So, yeah, several NGOs, and they together, they convinced the city, munici the municipality to turn blue. So it is strongly rooted. Um, at the local level. So I think the concept of blue community is quite well known in contrast to the other system where maybe the mayor was very um, attracted by blue community and decided to turn blue and to become a blue community then it's sometimes difficult to bring down the idea of blue community. Contribute just perhaps that the case of the city of St. Gallen. The city of St. Gallen also joined uh, three years ago and they decided to create um, a water rappen, a water sand team. And now in September they will write to all, all citizens in the, of the city of St. Gallen and inviting them to contribute voluntarily for each. Met, uh, cubic meter to give one or two or three a centim for a concrete water project. It's a, it's a new case, it's, a, it's an example, it's not yet known and not yet experienced how the public will, will react, but at least is a clear statement of the city authorities. Yes, we are engaged to maintain a good quality of our water. Uh, access to water in, the, in, our, in our city, but we want to do a city and we want to promote also um, in our population to a solidarity with people, with organizations, with movement in the south. I think it's a very good example and it seems that other cities are, have the political will to try the same and to follow the, the, the case of St. Gallen. Now again, this time much shorter and clearer. <laughs> um, there are other NGOs working in this field, INGOs. Do you work together with them? For example, Water for Water, Wasser für Wasser? Well, we, we, we try to coordinate uh, as much as possible with other actors. HEX uh, is, is also a member of uh, different networks. At the very moment, we are in strong um, conversation with um, Solidarito Swiss. This is an initiative already 10 years old. It's, um, it's an, it was an initiative of the Swiss Cooperation Development to, to involve the political municipalities uh, in the, in the, to, to, to give, to, to be in solidarity with the, with the movements, with the water project in the south. And so, yes, as we are trying to improve this coordination with Water for Water. We, we have dialogues. It's not, very, not yet very concrete, but on a very local level, we hope that uh, uh, local uh, groups of Water for Water and Swiss communities can join and also um, concretize activities in a very joint manner. Water for Water is very successful, they don't need us. 
Yeah, they are. Uh, we have been in contact, and usually, sometimes we have interested organizations, organizations who are interested in blue community, but they are only ready to work on core principle three, and um, they try to foster the consumption of of tap water instead of bottled water. And this is when we um, inform them about water for water, for example. So. I think we continue. Maybe we have time to answer to other questions later. We have now um, some examples of Swiss blue communities. We would like to show you how they work concretely. Um, we have two examples from Switzerland and also one example from Germany. And let us start with the blue community the local congregation Zollikofen at the outskirts of Bern. Yes, perhaps I will uh, make it very short. This is one of more or less 20 church communities here in, in, or in, in our case in, in Switzerland. Um, for the church leaders, for the pastors, yes, they say it's very attractive being blue community because water, yes, is important also in the religious life. Uh, baptism and so on, and it's really it's it's relatively easy, yes, to reach people and to to give the the, the water um, additional uh, an additional meaning and giving 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 uh, orientation in very crucial moments as baptism, but also in the circle of the of the of the year. And it's also, they say that it's, it's interesting to work in a network and to be in touch also with other blue communities and to come together and to exchange and exchange also experiences in this work. Perhaps I, I will do it a little bit faster. Ah, no, it's already the, 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 the next. Um, yes. Perhaps just um, for, from our perspective, yes, we have uh, reached uh, many blue um, church communities in Switzerland, and from our perspective, yes, it's interesting to 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 get additional church communities as member of blue communities. But also, it's important to 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 have access to to the authorities, to municipalities, and and universities. And so we are very motivated to, to go further and to motivate people to, to make their local efforts to, to convince the responsible people to, for a positive decision. Yeah, I think for Karl and me, this blue community in Zollikofen is really a leading example. It is not a huge community with many resources, but people are aware of the membership are, and are considering really a big variety of ways to make it known to a wider audience. So besides this annual service, for example, they organize joint events with other um, players in the municipality, for example, with the uh, library. Um, once they organized a guided tour to the water supplier, um, once they organized an evening with Carl to, let, to inform the community about the water problems in the global south, they organized a children's day with water at the fo at the center, um, etc. So many many possibilities how to become active. Now, let's go to Germany to the Blue Community School building. This is something very unique. It is the first Blue Community School that was established, and it is uh, something very new. Um, the school in Büdingen, this is um, the name of the school. Uh, it, is a, it is a gymnasium in, in, uh, in Büdingen, a college, sorry. And this college became a blue community only in May 2022. And behind this a uh, blue community uh, school is Klaus Wilkins, also a teaching person, and he had a 
strong interest in, or he has a personal interest in north-south relations. He knows the region of the Rio Pardo in Brazil very well. Uh, he he went several. He's visiting it again and again, and he likes to sensitize the pupils for water-related issues. And that's why he founded the first blue community school. And here you can see um, Klaus Wilken, it's the second from the left, sitting together with um, students, teacher, and also Maud Barlow at the center. Um, maybe you can, yeah, that's good. Now, um, we will present you a third example. It's from the city of Bern. The city of Bern was together with the university and the local congregation John in Bern, the first blue community in Switzerland. So they have quite a long history with blue community. And we asked them to visit us in Karlsruhe, but the mayor was not available, but he sent us uh, a, a video.
Now you have seen three very different blue community members. A city, a capital, the first blue capital worldwide, but also a school. They all have the same purpose, the basic principles, but have very different means, resources and competences to advocate for water as human right and public good. And I think this makes the Blue Community Initiative really very interesting to bring different bodies, different institutions together in order to become active for a common person. Yeah, so there, is a, there are many other blue communities. This was only a short insight in the variety of blue communities. Now we are almost at the end or at the end of our input on blue community. But there are all over the world now blue community um, coordinations um, emerging. Um, these are important websites. On the top, the Blue Planet Project. Uh, this is the organization who is in charge now for blue community at international level. So it was before it was a part of the Council of Canadian. Now it has branched off and it is um, independent. Then for Latin America, there is this Plataforma um, AAPC. In Germany, the blue, there is a blue community website. Um, another website for Spain, Comunidad Azul. Then in the United States, Food and Water Watch is in charge for blue community and our website, bluecommunity.ch. This is where you can find more information about blue community. So how can we get now as fast as possible a member of the blue community? What's the way? What's my next step? Very good question. I have to um, admit that uh, there are several ways. I mean, we have established one way for Switzerland. I can tell you how it is in Switzerland, but I'm not sure how it is in Spain. But um, we made the blue community initiative a little bit more binding. So. We ask for um, a self-declaration to a blue community. There you can, I have a template, and then you write down what's the motivation of your organization to become a blue community. And then we ask, for example, on how your organization can or, or will respect the different core principles of a blue community. Then you send us uh, this self-declaration and we um, discuss this declaration in our team. Then uh, we, had an, uh, we have an agreement with Maud Barlow that if um, this self-declaration is fine, then we can ask for the certificate in Canada. And if not, we have a discussion with the Council of Canadians if uh, the examples of possible activities are sufficient or not. So we have a kind of small round where we check these um, uh, self-declarations. So it is really very simple. But then we ask in Switzerland also to join once a year uh, an event. We have an annual meeting and uh, we, all, we are expecting also an annual report but nothing long, just one, two pages. It's, this is the way to become a blue community and we, um, we are here to help you if you have questions about concrete activities. Just a question, if you want to get the uh, positive decision of the city of Lucerne, what kind of help do you need to, to to reach this goal, I don't. I, I can imagine that. Yes, it's not. So, you are convinced. Yes, being in li living in a in a, in a region, you are convinced. Yes, it would. It's a good idea. I want that my city would join blue community. And but how to concretize this um, and this uh, this this goal? Perhaps you can also 
reach Lisa to, to get some help, to, some advice in this process? <laughs> or perhaps you have a, a lot of experience how to promote blue communities. <laughs> I, th I think the, the best example is always when you, do, when you um, give other examples. For example, when you say, well, the city of Bern is as well. Um, um, and perhaps you could also use the, the, the film that where Alec von Grafenried is promoting and his personal sec uh, um, press secretary told us that he, was, um, he really had a, a good time making this, this film and then he was already into the, the thing what, Oiko, uh, what um, a blue community is all about. So, and I think in, in Bern we realized that there is the city of Bern, it's the University of Bern, it's the um, Reformed churches, Bern Jura Solothurn, and there are also some uh, congregations and the Alpine Museum as well. So it's kind of, it's getting a network that gets bigger and bigger and when you start somewhere, for example, when you say, I have the, now the best uh, access or the best possibilities at the Luz, uh, Reformed Church of Luzerne, this is a start and then you can go continue with that, go to local congregations and then then later on you can go to the to the uh, city government and say, look, there there's this initiative and these and this and these organizations in Luzerne are already member and then, then I think this is very convincing. From our side, thanks a lot for your participation. It was, we were very motivated to, to offer this sharing. We are very convinced that this is a very useful um, instrument. We made during these days also the experience that partners in the South, from Nigeria, from Brazil, they are very, very much interested to become blue community, to mobilize also their knowledge and their their contribution and most of all to come together and being together there is more strength to yes to to to, to, to deal with these challenges and so we in Switzerland also coming together share uh, our the same objectives it's a, a great process and um, thanks a lot from our side for your interest and we are very ready also to support you when you have ideas how um, to uh, yes, to, to become blue community or to, to promote blue community in your region, in your networks. Um, from our side, thanks a lot for your interest and all the best in your efforts.